Hi, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Med Mentor Monday on interview advice. Med Mentors is a group of UCLA medical students who are here to share free advice and resources with pre-meds at UCLA and beyond. So be sure to check our website for more resources like peer advising, mock interview prep, um, and in-person meetups with med students like Coffee Chats. Um, but tonight is geared towards current applicants. We're going to be spending the first hour talking about general one-on-one -on -one interviews that you might have. And then we're going to spend the next hour talking about MMIs, group interviews, or any other type of special interview you might um, have during the cycle. And since a lot of interviews are online this season, uh, we'll also be giving some tips on how to do a virtual interview because those can be kind of weird, kind of different. Um, but thank you all for coming. Please feel free to put any questions in the Q&A instead of the chat. That way, uh, med students can reply as the session is going on, and then we'll save some general questions to answer at the end of the session, too. So let's get started. Um, we'll start by having everyone introduce themselves. So um, let's start off with Grace. If you want to just say your name, where you're from, um, what year you're in, and um, maybe like what undergrad you went to as well. For sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Grace. I am originally from Minnesota. I went to UCLA for undergrad, go Bruins, double Bruins in the house. Um, and what else am I saying? Oh, I'm a first year. I just started like a month ago. So yay. Great. Uh, Van, you want to go next? Hi, everyone. My name is Van, like the car, the shoe. I use she, her pronouns. I, like Grace, have the privilege of being an MS1 alongside some of the sweetest folks in the room. I'm born and raised in San Jose, California, which is part of the Bay Area. I stayed in the Bay and went to the other number one public university, Go Bears. Um, and I'm now lucky to remain in California to attend medical school here at UCLA. Um, with that, I'll pop going to Serene. Thank you, Van. Hi, everyone. My name is Serene. I use she, her pronouns. I'm also a uh, MS1. Um, I attended UC Irvine for my undergraduate um, career. Um, and what else? I'm from Orange County, California. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Reza. I'm a fourth year medical student uh, from Georgia. I went through this process a couple of years ago, but uh, I hope to be as helpful as I can today. Yes, and Reza is going to be uh, working from clinic, answering some of your questions in the chat and the Q&A. Um, so thank you all for being here. All right, let's get started talking about uh, general one-on-ones. So um, anyone can start, but we want to talk about what a one-on-one -on -one interview really is, um, what your experience was like just doing a one-on-one -on -one interview, and um, how did you prepare for that? I can start with this one. Uh, mostly because I'm really biased towards my one-on-one -on -one interviews and the interviews that I had that were one-on-one. -on -one. There are a couple of schools that were like that. I liked it way more than MMIs. The biggest reason is depending on the school, the person who's interviewing you will have already looked at your application. And so I came in feeling very seen. They had a lot of things that they wanted to know more based on what I shared in my primaries and secondaries. And so when it came to prep, and this is what folks mean when they say, know your application, is you need to be able to tell the stories off of your application. I was able to write a lot of what I did and why I did it, what I learned, how many people I served. That was really easy. The harder part is something that I like to do much more of, and that's reflecting. I've gotten to talk to a lot, a lot with Grace and Serenay about what it means to be like, from, from the experiences that we have and to recognize that my experiences, my lived experiences are really valuable. And so getting to share that in my one-on-ones was really great. When it's in your application, that means being able to tell the stories based off of the experiences that you had and why they mattered. A lot of the stories that you'll have will be able to adapt to different questions that you get. So if it's greatest leadership experience or a challenge that you've had, why medicine, all of those things come up time and time again. But the experiences that you have can be molded to each or on the flip side, you might have certain experiences that fit into those different categories. You don't always know what questions you're going to get asked. And so knowing the different ways that your different experiences can be shaped or are shaping the lived experience that you come in with will be really important. I completely agree with everything Van said. I hated MMIs so much. One-on-one um, -on -one interviews in my experience were a lot 
more chill. And I know that's a weird word to use with an interview because trust me, I was like freaking out for my med school interviews. But when you log in, they're like, oh, it's you. Like, nice to meet you. And they already know so much about you. And you're like, oh my goodness. They fly by. Most of mine were 30 minutes long. And I really think the biggest tip is something Van already said, which is to know your secondary, very cold, also your primary, like your personal statement. But the in my experience, almost every question you get asked is going to be about something you mentioned on your secondary. So be able to expand more than what you have already written down, basically. I agree with everything they've said. Um, I've also dealt with um, some interviews where they were closed filed or the interviewer only read my personal statement or even just my AMCAS um, application. And so I would suggest that knowing that if it's closed file, make sure to have, I guess, a list of things in the back of your head of like things you really want to convey to your interviewer that makes you stand out, shows that you're unique from the other applicants. That's great. And uh, do you guys have any advice for folks when maybe they don't know if it's open or closed file, like how to gauge how much information to tell or even just um, like how long an answer should be Okay, so pro tip, look online. You can probably find out if it's open or closed file, unless you're like the first interview of the cycle. But we're past that now, so you should be able to just find it online or at least find last year's. They probably did not change it. Um, but in terms of like what, how long to talk, I tried to limit to like two minutes for my initial answer to a question and they're gonna have follow-up questions. Um, but maybe other people have different opinions on that. Um, yeah, so I would suggest looking on Reddit, the school's website, or even SDN. Oftentimes people will disclose that to you, so it is a bonus, um, but use it um, to your discretion. Um, and sometimes the schools will also give you a heads up and let you know in advance to prepare for the interview that way. And same as Grace, I kept my answers um, under three minutes at least, yeah. Cool, and on the note for preparation too, do you guys have any practical advice for um, maybe practicing your answers to common interview questions? Okay. One more time, that was practicing common interview questions, right? Okay, go ahead, Grace. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what I did, which I highly recommend, is I would record myself giving an answer like on my phone beforehand to a bunch of common questions. So the questions that I prepared for is, tell me about yourself, why medicine, and why this school? And I would record myself like pretending I was in the interview, and then I would just re-watch it. Well, first of all, when you watch it the first time, you'll realize like you sound not great and <laughs> you'll you'll adjust if you need to um uh, but then instead of just rehearsing a bunch of times i was scared i would get too robotic so i would just watch my video and like passively take in like oh yeah that's what i want to say so that's what i did personally um oh sorry van did you want to go next um go ahead okay Thanks. Um, for me, I thought, for me, I like to like see the questions um, and everything that I could potentially be asked. And so I would look on Reddit for like a list of interview questions or even came up with some in my head. Um, and I would put it all on a Google Doc and write an answer to it, like bullet point answers, um, the major talking points that I really wanted to convey to my interviewers. Um, but similar to Grace, I would try to repeat it enough times, but keep it natural so that it wasn't so robotic. One thing that I noticed is I cannot type my answers because if I type them out, I read them like that, but how I wrote them isn't the same as my actual voice. So if I read the script, it wouldn't sound like who I actually am. And so I would talk to folks who know how I usually talk and how I usually sound to see if what I'm saying matches my intent or what I'm trying to convey. And I think that once I noticed the discrepancy, then it became much more easy for me to try to say something, have a transcript of it, 
like use talk to tech, tech, talk to text, I think is what it's called. And that would help me to figure out more about what I actually sounded like so that I could type that or read that. Um, that being said though, the cup, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend because it's interviews. And so I do my best to find in between, which like Sarah Nay means looking up the questions and having a general response in mind without filling in all of the details. Great. And um, since you all went through the application cycle when it was completely online, um, what advice do you have that may be different from like, I don't know, if you weren't on Zoom? So thinking about things like Zoom backgrounds or, um, you know, ring lights or other things like that, and also just kind of getting over the nerves of having an, your first interview. Wear sweatpants for sure. I did this for all of my interviews. Um, I wore black sweatpants because a part of me was like, what if I have to stand up? Okay, they're not going to ask you to stand up, but I promise it makes a big difference. Um, okay, so I made the mistake at my first interview of sitting in front of a window, which I was like, the lighting is so good. But these interview days are usually so long that the sun would like move and there would be like shadows happening. So I would recommend like, I don't own a ring light, but maybe use like a lamp or something along with your window because it's the lighting is going to move and it, it is so awkward during the interview to be doing this. So yeah. Um, and adding on to what Grace said, um, the interview days are very, very long. So make sure that you have an idea of what the schedule looks like. Make sure that you're on time for everything. Um, I would also suggest doing like test runs, tech checks. Um, and I uh, actually did use a ring light and it definitely made a difference because I could change like the lighting colors and like the strength of the lighting. Um, and I would also suggest to have a backup plan too, because my roommate on uh, the day of her interview, her laptop didn't work for her first um, session. And so she like immediately ran to my room and asked to borrow my laptop. And so I would really suggest to like, make sure to have backups and just plan for any bad scenarios that could happen your interview day. Related to that, um, be careful how the light hits your face. I know that I'm really self-conscious because I have a very oily T-zone. On top of that, um, Carlos has a question regarding glasses. I'm lucky that my glasses don't generally have a glare, so you can notice that when I like turn my face. Um, but I sit right by a window, and y'all can see that right here. It's hitting my, my face pretty harshly. Um, and that can happen during your interview too, and that can be distracting. And so think about the time of day that you're interviewing and note that some of the interviews that you have may be in different time zones. So know that when you're introducing yourself, say, you're saying good morning, might actually mean saying good afternoon to someone else. So it's just a small thing, um, but know how the time of day can affect when or how light shines on your face. Um, and if there's light that's coming in really harshly here, then I would have to compensate by moving my ring light here. So a lot of it might be trial, trial and error during different points of the day on a day that you happen to have that time available so you can see what you look like. Great. Well, since we are pretty prepared now um, for virtual interviews, um, let's talk about probably the most asked questions um, that you might see in your interview. And this is a popular question that you guys got for us. So um, we're going to just go through some frequently asked interview questions that happen in a one-on-one -on -one setting. And we're going to talk about how uh, we approach these questions and really any tips um, for those most popular questions. And then we'll also talk about maybe some weird questions or how to approach questions that you're not expecting. Um, so for the first one, the biggest one is uh, I think, tell me about yourself. How did you guys go about answering that question? Do you want us to be literal in how we answered or like what, what bullet? You can just talk oh. naturally. You don't have to go <laughs> into interview. <laughs> I'm like, oh, here we go. It's happening. I'm doing my interview again. No, it's no, 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 time. no triggering needed. <laughs> No, literally. Um, I don't remember everything I said, but I know that I went into like where I'm originally from, where I went to undergrad, what I studied. I emphasized that I enjoyed my major uh, because I thought like as much as personality as you can add into these questions, uh, I think is good because they are going to ask you to tell them about yourself. They will. So 
you should have like some good little things in there that make you like shine for who you are. So I talked a little bit about like my family, what I like to do in my free time, stuff like that. Yeah. And on top of that, like, remember this question is very, very personal and everyone's going to have a different answer to it. So definitely make it your own. Include things that you think are very unique about yourself, um, specifically like what you did during your gap year or any important leadership roles you would like to highlight. Um, and make sure that you kind of have an idea of the major points you want to talk about. Um, don't ramble. Don't let this go on for over three minutes. Um, keep it concise. I have nothing else to add. Right. Yeah, I think a lot of people worry about that and they worry if they have to kind of give like some sort of background story or like say specific things, but just try to be yourself and keep it short because they can always ask you to elaborate on some aspect that you mentioned. Um, like I always said things like, oh, I'm from Kentucky. Like I was, you know, um, I said the city I was from and like that I had you know, a little brother. I don't know. I was just trying to like add exactly personality and just paint a picture of like what my life is like. You know, my family's in Kentucky. I'm here, you know, whatever. It's, there's no right answer for this question. It's just for them to, it's really to help the interviewer try to find pieces to hold on to and know what to ask next. Because if you say, oh, I played soccer in college, then they can say, oh, my son plays soccer in college. And then it's just a nice um, jumping off point. Okay, so the next big question is, of course, why medicine? Why do you want to be a doctor? What are some major points you should hit on there? Advice that I'd heard is that um, answering this question helps them to determine whether or not you want to be in medicine or actually want to be in medicine. And what I mean by that is in med like the field, the medical career is really long, it's really difficult, it's really trying. So is your why enough to not just get you there, but also help to get you through? Um, so that was part of the reason why I, my journey into medicine was definitely through ob and very intrinsic interest early on. But why I stayed in medicine was because I worked in education prior to this and knew that education wasn't my field and that I would need a medical career in order to Oh, her Wi-Fi. I think Van is freezing. I wasn't sure if it was me or not. Uh, we'll get back to her. Um, does anyone else want to answer the question while she's frozen? Yeah, so I, I guess like on top of that, um, in my response to like why medicine, I also included my upbringing, like the hardships my family had like been through and like how that affected me. I um, mean, ultimately like led me to a career to like serve others. Um, who like faced barriers in healthcare. Um, and so I definitely made it very, I guess, like really tied into like who I was um, and how it was a big motivating factor for me. Yeah, um, Van is logging back in right now, by the way. Um, very similar to Serenay, I made my why medicine answer like something that no one else could ever give that identical answer to me. Um, it was a lot easier for me because I have a really like specific and personal medical history and journey. So I just talked a lot about that, but you don't have to like have a crazy medical past in order to be interested in medicine. I think just coming up with specific examples of maybe moments in your life when, or in undergrad, when you were like, oh, this is definitely what I want to do. Um, I think just be genuine because they can like smell you out if you're being like fake so that's my biggest piece of advice. Oh, yay. Perfect timing. <laughs> Speaking of connectivity issues, UCLA no has you better. Um, I forget what I was saying. Uh, so I will continue after someone else goes. You're next. You're next. So anything. You <laughs> it was perfect timing. You came right back. I'm glad. Uh, but know what your connectivity options are. I think someone I asked in the chat what happens when you have connectivity issues. Hotspot was a really great option. And fortunately for UCLA, so I'm a UCLA student housing as UCLA guest option. Um, so that was what I did.
Perfect. We can go on to the next um, popular interview question. Um, why? It's the question is why do you want to go to this particular school? So how do you prepare for that answer? How do you make it not seem uh, disingenuous? Genuous and um, yeah, what did you talk about? Um, I guess for my answer, it was it really stemmed from my um, my gap year experience where I was working. Um, on interdisciplinary teams and I saw how everyone worked together to ultimately like help patients. And so in my answer of like why why be a physician instead of a different career, it really came down to like the the critical role that like physicians had in really caring for patients that differs from other healthcare providers. Um, and I really emphasize that I wanted to pursue medicine because of the lifelong learning aspect of it, being able to know everything possible to help my future patients. Um, and that's what I really emphasized in my answer. Oh, but I also was very genuine and spoke about how important everyone else is on the healthcare team, whether that's your PAs, nurses, physical therapists. Um, I made sure to acknowledge their hard work and how important they, they are in patient care. Um, for answering the question, why this school, I mainly looked at the school websites. I looked at what was important to that medical school in particular, and I tried to find something that I was genuinely passionate about. I, I actually tried to find like three things that I was like, yes, I love this about this school and, um, maybe draw on some of my own personal experiences for like why I really related to one of their missions. Um, something I always tried to talk about was why I really valued the di the diversity of the school. That was one that I used for like every medical school. So they don't have to be like extremely specific to the one school, but I think you should have some things that are like, you can't find this anywhere else. For example, at UCLA, we have our discovery year, the third year, you can't find that anywhere else. So that's what I did. Oh my gosh, Julia, did I answer the wrong question? I totally blinked out. You're fine. I mean, that is also a very I had a, really long day. I had a long day and heard something else. I'm No, no, no. Um <laughs> everything is helpful. We were just talking about why you would choose a certain school. So, honestly, oh, answer, I heard career. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, you're good. Um but I thought your answer was kind of going in that direction at first. So I was like, maybe she just wants like a collaborative team environment. Oh, and she but that's about what schools that that's, have that. Too. that's fine too. You can always start with a personal story. So Yeah. So sorry. I, I heard um, why medicine and not something else. No, it's okay. One more thing I'll add is it's really helpful to know what you're looking for in a medical school. And so, for example, I was applying, I was thinking of applying to programs that would make it really easy for me to take a year, a uh, leave of absence. I really value furthering my education in general. And I mentioned earlier that I really like education. And so those schools that had more than just the medical school, so you say it has a school of education and information, I think is what they call it. Um, the school, so, school of social work, my roommate is, a, has a, or is getting her PhD in public health. And so I really valued what I I was getting from my medical school in addition to my medical education and medical training. Um, if your school has that, that's one example of how I identified UCLA as being one of my top choices. Um, other examples might be, like, in addition to location, can you actually talk about what it means to potentially live there? Are you able to talk about some of the faculty or the unique experiences? And just a lot of that will come from the research that Grace had already mentioned. And so I definitely recommend making sure that what you're saying as unique to that school is actually unique to that school because they'll know um, this isn't something that you can BS. Yes, one thing I always say too, like if you can't come up with something that's unique because it really is hard when you're looking at schools, websites, you know, the curriculum's all blurred together. The research is probably good. Like everything blurs. So um, the things they talked about today that make it unique and also simply like the location or if you have any family ties to the location or any reasons that you would want to be there. Think about that, too, because, you know, if they're asking why UCLA, they also want to know why L.A. and what about L.A. makes you want to go there for your medical training. OK, um, 
we still have time for some other popular ones. So um, a lot of times people will just pick, you know, a prominent activity like uh, clinical volunteering or service or research and ask you kind of to tell me more about that. Um, how do you answer this question without being too repetitive, like from your secondary essays and personal statements? I would say uh, prepare some anecdotes ahead of time for all of your activities, things that actually like do have a maybe like a deeper meaning. If you can think of like a really impactful moment in whatever organization or whatever you were involved in um, and about research. So I had a few times where interviewers would like ask me about my research and then they would be like, tell me more. And they would go deeper and deeper and deeper. And you uh well I hit a point where I was like you know I I don't know the answer to your question and the guy was like you would be surprised how many students sit there and they can't say they don't know an answer and I was like yeah right like that was all planned so I think just don't be afraid to be like I don't know because especially with research like they will try to if you get paired with like a researcher they're gonna be like oh, I want to know more, 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 more. And you're going to, unless you're a PhD, you're going to hit a wall where you're like, I don't know. So just don't be afraid to say when you don't know. That's great advice. Um, I myself am in the MD-PhD program here. So if anyone is applying to that type of research program, you will definitely get asked about your research. And I have been kind of, following different rabbit holes of, of professors asking crazy questions that I don't know the answers to. And it's true. You have to kind of get to a point where you're okay with being like, I'm not sure. And you can always take an educated guess, but they're really just trying to evaluate how you think. And um, we'll talk about this too in the next session on MMIs. A lot of times they're just trying to, to hear you think out loud and understand how you process difficult questions. So the last one that is related to this is the challenge question or the failure question or um, what's a time that you faced adversity. So um, maybe if you guys could share some examples of what you talked about for those questions and um, how you answered it in, in your interviews. One example that I have um, talked about um, an experience that was challenging in general and what it meant to me. Um, in my sophomore year of college, I was part of a student organization. At the end of student organization, or at the end of every semester, then we do a feedback session, but it was literally framed roasting circle. Um, I identified, I, I, I said, I told them I was a sophomore at the time. And so to me, I was really young and experienced and didn't feel like I, that was something that is something I would speak up about. I went with the flow and as a result of it, got really heavily roasted and that was traumatizing to say the least. Um, so experience was really difficult. Oh no. Oh, not again. The greatest challenge of this panel is, is internet issue. <laughs> okay, well, let's just switch to someone else and hope she comes back. Um, I can go next. I guess one of the challenges that um, I spoke about was a uh, time in a uh, sophomore year in college, I just completely didn't really take care of myself. I didn't really dedicate any time to self-care. And to me, I saw that as a challenge because it affected everything that I did, such as academics and um, spending time with family. I would just focus too much on school and didn't really dedicate time to myself. Um, and then I realized how important that was much later on. Um, and I talked about it in a way um, by using like the STAR method. I don't know if you all know about that, but essentially you talk about the situation, um, like you set the scene, you describe what had happened, and then you identify the task. What did you decide to do um, because of that challenge and the action that resulted from it? How did you complete it? Um, for me, that meant um, going to the counseling center, talking with my friends and family and ensuring that people kept me in check um, and saw that I was taking care of myself. And then talk about the results as well. Um, describe 
the situation in terms of like, oh, the situation is okay now um, and what you're working on to like still improve. Um, and so that's how I, I went about that question. I completely agree with everything Sarah Nay said. I think it's important to remember to give a conclusion to your problem so that they're not like left on a weird note of like, are you good now? Um, the situation I talked about was I was born with a cleft lip and palate. And so I've had like over 20 surgeries to fix my birth defects. And I talked about a time I was like 10 a particular surgery I had where I had to have bone harvested from my pelvis and grafted into the roof of my mouth to fill my <laughs> cleft palate. Sorry, that's like so gross. But um, basically, they had to cut through the muscles in my side. So I was in the hospital for like a month relearning how to walk. And it hurt so bad, bro. It was terrible. But um, the way that I like coped with that situation was I leaned on my nurses and my doctors. And I got so much more than just like medical care from them I got like emotional support and like a family for that month and so um I'm good now don't worry guys I'm all good so I think it's important to tie up at the end that like where how you resolved it and what coping mechanisms you used um just so that they're not like what <laughs> I think that's great and another thing to add too is um you know, don't feel like your challenge or your failure has to be bigger or badder than anyone else's. Uh, a lot of times people think, oh, they need to have this crazy big challenge. Um, but it could be something small, like an experiment not working in lab and just talking about how you would approach that. And um, it's really just for them to know how you deal with challenges. <laughs> and that's that's it. Don't overthink it too much. Um, so, uh, going off of that, we're going to transition to talking about some do's and don'ts in interviews, and then we'll also answer some, um, remaining questions that we have. Um, so one of my big don'ts is don't overthink the question too much. Um, but what are your do's and don'ts? Uh, I guess we'll start with like good things to do, major tips, if you haven't already talked about them. Um, I guess um, major do for me is to provide concrete examples um, through anecdotes. So I think that storytelling is very, very important. Um, it keeps them engaged and sitting at the edge of their seat. Um, so definitely have some stories in mind. It'll make you more memorable too. I think um, you should practice with a friend or a family member, even though it's so awkward because you're like, I know this isn't real, but I have to pretend like it is. And um, what you should focus on when you're practicing is having your personality still come through when you're like actively trying to think of an answer to a question. This is harder than you think but if you practice like twice you'll be fine um it's something that every time I before I logged into a zoom interview I was like don't forget to like just be yourself and so I would like gaslight myself into thinking like this is so fun like Grace you're about to have so much fun right now and it actually helped me like I swear I'm being serious because otherwise you're gonna be nervous because everyone's nervous but you have to like fight through that and still you don't have to be like super bubbly if you're not bubbly but just um don't be like scared because they're gonna be like oh Hi everyone, this is Van. I apologize for the technical difficulties, but I'm here by voice. Um, one other thing that I would add is literally anywhere that is very you, I would try to incorporate that. So for me, one thing that is very me is, hi, my name is Van, like the car or the shoe. Um, it helps that it's related to my name and that helps, helps for them to remember my name. But if, there, if there's something that's so key to your identity, that you want for them to know. I oftentimes ask, what's something that you would love for me to know about you? Or what's something that you'd like to, or how would you like for me to address you? Are some of the more personal questions that might not get asked in the MMIs, but do have the opportunity to be asked during one-on-one -on -one interviews. And that fortunately opens up a lot of opportunity for them to share a little bit more about them. And oftentimes they'll ask more about you too. So that creates an open conversation for you both. Great. And what are some major don'ts or things that you don't recommend doing for your interview? 
Um, I think based on our previous conversa conversations, do not memorize scripts, do not be a robot, please. <laughs> um, try to be as human as you can and be natural. Don't talk badly about the school that you are applying to and don't talk badly about other med schools either. Just don't be rude. <laughs> Just be nice and smile. Pretend like you're having fun. Um, I think it helps the interviewer have more fun with you too. Yeah, and I'll say too, um, from the perspective of an older student who's been involved in like the interviewing process, um, you know, like like Grace said, when you're on the screen, like, you know, look like you're you're engaged and excited to be there, especially if there's like some sort of um, like discussion or panel going on. Um, you know, you want to you want to seem like you want to be there. You don't want to be like going and getting a snack while while the presentation is going on. That being said, sometimes schools um, specifically have like one on one sessions where you can just chat with current med students that are more casual and social. And if they tell you that, like, we're not judging you during this time, believe them, because um, a lot of times, at least here, really is true where, um, you know, for them, for the MSTP, sometimes we'll have these like virtual social events and like we're not taking notes about people. Um, so it's kind of a balance. Just you know, be on your A game, but don't be so stressed that you're not being yourself too. Okay, so we'll finish off with just um, some other questions I got before um, the event from you all. So uh, one of the big questions is, you know, you're getting a lot of questions as an interviewee. What questions can you ask your interviewer, especially in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, when the interviewer is coming to an end? Um, so just a tip, like prepare more questions than you think you're going to need, because some interviewers will hit you like seven minutes into the interview. They're like, what questions do you have for me? And you're like, oh, OK. Um, so make sure you have more than you think. You for sure should have three, but I would say try to come up with like five. Um, di have different questions for students and for faculty. Um, I have pulled up the document that I <laughs> used. Oh, this is the best tip I'm going to give you're on Zoom interviews, you can have your notes up on your screen. Just don't like read them and make it obvious. Just have like little words. I did this. I literally have my questions written out. So I've asked for faculty. I'd love to know what you believe makes blank school unique and why you felt it was the right place for you to be in this stage of your career. I wouldn't sound that robotic when I said it because back then I had it like memorized, but you know, um, what is your biggest piece of advice for a future medical student? How would you define an excellent physician? For students, I asked, um, how has your perception of medicine evolved since you started school? I don't know, Sarah Nate, what do you think? Um, just adding on to that, for faculty, if I had their name and information beforehand, I would definitely do some research about them and then just think of like one to two questions to ask about like their specialty, um, why they decided to pick that specialty, just to show some interest in like your interviewer. Um, and for students, I asked similar questions to Grace. Um, but I also asked them about like their school and life balance, what they did for fun, um, and just try to keep as personable as possible, like asking them like, oh, where are the best places to eat in LA? Um, do you all like do rock climbing together, surfing, et cetera? And they actually do. <laughs> um, so it's just really cool just to get a sense of like who they are and like how you can see yourself being there. Um, I think it's important to ask those questions and be like have fun with it too. Oh, and another pro tip, um, try not to ask questions that can easily be found on the school's website. Um, it might make you look a bit uh, funny <laughs> if you don't know what the curriculum the school has and um, stuff like that. Van, do you want to add anything for uh, good questions to ask your interviewer if they ask you, do you have any questions for me? Thank you for the question. Um, something that I really liked asking is why they chose to stay at the school or be at the school that they're at. 
there's a little bit of more a little bit more insight about the culture or why they really enjoy it, whether it's the community, the diversity, the opportunities that are available. So it helps me to better imagine myself there too, or better identify if that's not a good fit for me. So why someone else stayed or why they chose this institution. Great, and we have another question, a bunch of questions about Zoom backgrounds. So uh, what did you guys put in your background? Did you use like a real background with plants or something behind it? Or did you uh, do a virtual background? Should you keep it blank or should you add some personality? Um, I was told by um, some medical students to just keep it simple, keep it plain, um, try not to show your room, such as like your bed or like belongings. Um, just try to keep it as standard as possible. You could definitely add a plant in the background just for some extra like spice, <laughs> but um, I would really suggest going with a blank white wall or something like that. I agree. There was a question that came up earlier about backgrounds and um, the only time that I saw one person use a background in all of the interviews that I had was when their like, environment was really otherwise unsafe um, for the people who were there it, were there with them. Um, that person needed privacy and um, this person as a result who was doing interviews had a physical constraint where they needed to have a background. Other than that, um, I think every single person that I interviewed with had a blank, had a blank background. I've only seen one example where non-blank or otherwise neutral background worked. This person was applying to residency and in the back had a photo frame that, um, that said, please pick me or please choose me, um, which I think was really funny, super memorable and made it onto med Twitter. Other than that, everyone that I interviewed with had a blank, had a blank background. Also, right, we have fun that some schools will tell you at the beginning, if you have a virtual background, turn it off. So you might want to be prepared if that happens, that your apartment's not like disgusting behind you. So I always did it in front of a blank wall, no virtual background, because they're worried about like the Wi-Fi, I guess. If everyone has virtual backgrounds, it can like screw things up. So just be prepared if they ask you to turn it off. Another question we had too is, um, what advice do you have to someone who has a hard time speaking for a couple of minutes without stuttering or using filler words? I'm not sure if this is because you, uh, if this person has a certain disability, a learning disability, if that's the case, then I would start um, or preface my interview with that to let them know. Um, if it's otherwise um, like a neutral utterance, then I would work uh, or do my best to minimize that as much as possible. So if, it, if it's related to a learning ability, then I would share it. If it's something that is more within your control, then I would do my best to minimize the opportunities that it comes up. Great, um, thank you. And so another uh, question we have too is, um, how do you approach interview questions that are just completely out of left field, like you never saw them online, you had zero expectations for how to deal with them? Um, what is your approach in that situation? How do you stay calm under that pressure? Um, you'll bond with your future classmates about this. We've all talked about the terrible questions we got asked. What I did is... I just, I put on my best acting shoes and I acted like, oh, that's such a good like question. Thank you for asking that. That'll buy you about five seconds of thinking. So just be like, I've never thought of that question before. And then I tried to just pretend like I was so thrilled to be answering any question because normally if they ask you a hard question, they want to see you like freeze up. And so I would be like, ah, thank you so much for asking that. Like, I've never thought of that question before. And then I would simply make up an answer. Like, I would have your family give you weird questions and just practice, like, coming up with something that's professional and maybe memorable. Um, but if anyone asks you a inappropriate question, remember to report them. It happens. Like Grace mentioned earlier, so just to uplift or remind folks about this answer, if you don't know, you can take a moment to pause and say, that's a really good question. Thank you so much for it. 
um, let me take a moment to um, to think about that a little bit more before I respond. Um, so make sure that you're like visibly letting them know that it's not an awkward pause. And then um, I think that's all I have. Yep. Um, and if the question makes you feel uncomfortable in any way, don't be afraid to like mention to your interviewer that you don't feel comfortable answering such a question. Um, but thank you for asking it. <laughs> Just try to be um, nice still. Yeah, I remember having the question um, at an interview that um, was, I mean, this was years ago, so I can say it now, but uh, it was basically like, what was a time that someone superior to you, um, like, let you down or something? And I was like, that's very challenging, because it almost was like, they wanted me to talk bad about, like, mentors I've had, like, I don't know, that was like the first thing that came to mind. So Again, like, I don't even remember what I said. It was like a fever dream. <laughs> but I just, I was kind of like, let me take a second and think about that. And that's totally fine. And it's going to feel really tense in that silence. But, you know, give yourself a few moments. Don't, don't be sitting there for like five minutes. But you can even, if you have a water bottle or something, just take a sip of water and process and then kind of just come back with your best approach. And even if you kind of start rambling a little bit, that's okay. They might just be trying to see how you're thinking through a question and then you'll get to an answer in the end and it will be okay. It's just one question in the interview. Okay, um, let's go back to one of the other questions because someone wants to know how you'd approach this um, because Serene kind of talked about this, how why she chose uh, being a physician as opposed to other healthcare careers. So that might be a question you'll get. And related to that, sometimes they'll even ask, if you couldn't be a physician, what would you be? And um, have an answer prepared for that too. Um, it can really showcase uh, some other aspect of your personality. And that's normally what they're trying to, trying to look for there. So if you guys have any advice on um, either the first question I talked about, physician versus other healthcare or completely different career. I can briefly answer the first question on why medicine and versus other careers. And I can elaborate more on the second question. My main reason about wanting to become a physician is for the leadership opportunities. Um, I love being able to make calls and also to prove myself that I'm competent enough to make those calls. Regarding a career that I would have out, or if it wasn't in medicine, it would actually be in education. Um, I really enjoy the work that I had done, and this relates a lot to my identity in general. I really value education, and particularly for first-gen, low-income students of color, um, and that shined a lot. I think that was related to the fact that I really want to serve this population as a physician later on, and so if they asked that question, then I would still ultimately tie into the values that I have and how I can integrate those values as or in my career as a physician, um, and so it might be tricky if you're responding with a career that's completely different because you'd have to defend yourself in a way to say like, oh, like that, like it's easier to do that or it doesn't take as much education or you make more money off of that. So be prepared to defend why medicine um, when it comes down to it, if so. I agree with Van. I don't think I have anything more to add. I also said the leadership aspect and just being able to see, um, to tangibly be able to like measure the progress of my patient over a long period of time. Related to this, um, someone asked, how would you deal with the question of, um, you know, are you interviewing at other schools? Where does our school fall in your preference list? Technically, interviewers are not supposed to say this, but this could be an example of maybe a borderline inappropriate question. And how would you address that? Um, I guess for me, if the school asked me that question, I would assure to them that like, I would be so extreme. I am extremely grateful to be interviewing at their school um, and even like being considered for their medical school. I would just really emphasize like how grateful I am for the opportunity. Um, and if the school happened to ask if they're your backup school, um, you can assure to them that 
they're not your backup school. Um, and if they are your number one top choice, um, definitely let them know that as well. Yeah, good answer. Because um, everyone's interviewing at multiple schools, so you don't have to worry about that question. And then um, just make sure you don't tell every school that, that they are your top school um, because committees sometimes know each other and talk and you don't wanna risk you know, uh, getting out that you're just saying that every school is your favorite just to say it. But if you genuinely have a top choice, you can totally say that. Okay. Um, one other question I have from the chat here um, is, you know, fun question, like, what do you do for fun? Or what do you do in your free time? Um, should you answer it honestly? Or should you answer it in like a strategic way that shows off some like, a uh, good trait of being like a doctor. I saw Grace smile at this question. <laughs> I always went honest, um, even if it was like, this might be like, I don't know, if it was maybe not like the most polished answer. I just tried to be true to myself. I think that they don't really care so much about what you're saying. They care more about how you're saying it. And are you coming across as like, this is the true person that I'm talking to? Or is this just someone who's like, trying to be like, oh, everything I say is gonna paint me in a perfect light. So um, I don't know if there's like a specific fun question, but like, I can't even remember getting asked very many fun questions, to be honest. Um, but maybe with like med students, I feel like maybe they asked more. Like, what do you like to do for fun? And I would just be like, Netflix, like what? I'm tired. I don't, I don't do things like, I'm not an active person. And they're like, me neither. And we would just move on, you know? <laughs> I think that's so true. Uh, part of the question is related to whether or not you'd be able to balance life in general. Like med school should not be your only priority, personality, identity. And so knowing what kind of person you come into the institution with, um, UCLA in particular, has you answer the question, you're going to be a physician and something else um, that might be related to the things that you do for fun. It might also be related to the other career you might have. Um, so that feeds into some of the other answers or can feed into the other answers as well. Yeah, I'll say I remember getting a question um, just kind of as an icebreaker. It was in a group setting uh, at an interview, just everyone kind of sitting um, in the room waiting for the first uh, like info session. Now, mine was in person. So uh, they went around and they were like, you know, say your name and, and then add what, what, what's your favorite book? And I remember laughing because it was one of my first interviews and everyone, I, I mean, almost everyone said, being Mortal by Atul Gawande, which is like an iconic, you know, medical book. It's like very much, I mean, it's a great book, um, but that's not my favorite book. And, and it gets to me and I'm like going through my head. I'm like, am I supposed to say something medical? Like, am I supposed to say something related to medicine to sound smart like these people? And I just said, no, man, my, my favorite book is like the book thief, um, which is like a teen kind of fiction book that I read in middle school and it still, you know, stands as one of my favorite books I've read. And it was just funny because I remember the directors kind of being like, oh, wow, like finally something different, like something unique. And, um, you know, maybe maybe those people got in as well, but like I got into that school. And so I was like, well, I guess it worked, like it worked. So um, yeah, just be yourself is the main message. All right, so in the next five minutes before we transition to our second session, um, I just want to have the panelists lead, uh, leave with some words of wisdom, words of encouragement to all of these uh, future med students um, right before interview season. Y'all yeah, were chosen to interview for a reason. Um, so don't forget that whenever it is that you start the process, they really do want to get to know you as much as you want to get to know them. Um, which, which on that note, make sure that you take advantage of the interview opportunity to Make sure that this is a school that you also really want to go to, or if it's not a school that you really don't want to go, or if it's a school you don't want to go to, then figure that out too. Um, this is your opportunity to interview them. And I know that if you get in, then you get the opportunity to go to Second Look. Um, but know that I didn't even go to the Second Look for UCLA. Um, so my interview opportunity was really a big part in me deciding that this was the right place for me. Um, so remember, you were chosen for a reason. Um, don't compare yourself to others because comparison is the thief of joy. 
and uh, make this your learning opportunity to, to decide if that's where you want to be as well. Yeah, and just building off of that, you all come with so many different experiences and so many stories. Do not be afraid of your interview. You got this. We believe in you. You're going to do great. Make sure to just have a bunch of stories prepared um, and everything should be okay. Don't forget to write thank you notes. Um, you should send thank you emails, but do not expect a reply back. Don't be offended. A lot of the faculty are like not allowed to talk to you after the interview day. So it's not a bad sign. Like none of my UCLA interviewers replied to my thank you note. It worked out. So you guys got this. Believe in yourself and just literally just smile. I feel like when I was on the Zoom call with like all the faces, everyone was like, so I was sitting there like, hey guys, like, you know, just try to be happy because they're really not evaluating you when you're in those giant rooms. It's really like in your one little interview. So, but your face might hurt by the end of the day. I'm sorry. You got this. <laughs> yes, take breaks, you know, eat snacks. If they tell you that you have like an hour break, just really do turn it off and, and just go close your eyes and lay in your bed a little bit because it can be really exhausting, um, especially on Zoom. And so best of luck and uh, we'll stop recording